vlogs, you know that I've had a really intense semester of textile design school, and now that I'm finally on my winter break, I really just want to do some like fun, happy, really chill crafting projects just to feel some holiday cheer. Ryan and I got this tiny little Christmas tree to decorate our tiny little apartment, and right now it only has four Christmas ornaments on it, so it's looking pretty naked. So I decided to get the little tree a gigantic hat because I thought it was hilarious. I love it, but I keep having this gut feeling like it's just missing something because the top is all decorated and festive and the bottom is just not. And for some reason when I look at this my brain keeps going, it needs shoes. So the other day I decided to follow that impulse and I grabbed a pair of Ryan's boots and Do you see the vision? So here's what I had in mind. I want to make a gigantic pair of elf shoes and a gigantic hat just to make a complete festive outfit for our little naked tree friend. And I want to try to use wet felting techniques for this project just because I've had a lot of fun exploring that medium lately. I've taken some classes both in person and online and I've been watching a boatload of YouTube videos on the topic so I feel like I want to take everything I've learned, just like mash it together, try to make it my own, and just have some fun making something completely absurd. And I'll try my absolute best to explain everything that I'm doing along the way. So yeah, let's do it. Today I'm going to start by preparing all the materials that I need for the wet felting process. I went through my entire stash of wool and I pulled out everything that was white, green, and red. And before I work with these materials, I want to process them with my drum carter. I'm first going to start with the color green. So in front of me, I have three little piles of green roving and a tiny little pinch of green Angelina sparkle. And what I'm going to do is put all of these fibers through this drum carter. And what that's essentially going to give me is one solid amount of fiber that is all of these pretty evenly blended together. And it's not only just going to mix the color, it's also going to align the fibers so that they're all going the same way, which is going to make the felting process a whole lot easier. So yeah, let's get to it. After carting all my green fibers, I decided that this bat just wasn't really blended enough for my liking. I totally could have used it as is, but as you can see there are still distinctive chunks of each of the shades of green that I used, and I wanted the colors to mix just a little bit more. So I took this bat, tore it into smaller pieces, and then carted the fiber again. Carting a second time, I was much happier with the blended colors. I think this turned out to be a perfect Christmas green. So I just finished my little pile of green and I was moving on to my red bat. And as I was unwrapping this bat in particular, which I got secondhand from a friend of mine, I noticed it was wrapped in all this like newspaper scrap just to keep the bat from like getting super tangled on itself. And I was like, Dang, these look pretty old. I wonder if I can find a date somewhere. <laughs> and I found one. And so it's for a coupon, five for $1 light bulbs. And this coupon expires February 18th, 1986. <laughs> That's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> so yeah, let's give this bat some purpose. <laughs> I gotta take off this jacket because it's like 100% wool and this is a bit of a workout. <laughs> so for this one, I'm mixing this kind of like soft duller red with this super vibrant red and the goal is to kind of get something in between. My 
table is way too light for this. So as I'm doing this, it's like running around and makes it so much harder. <laughs> And just like with my green bat, I ended up carding each one of these twice just to get a really nice blend of the two red wool colors. <sighs> okay, it's been a couple hours and I have quite a lot of fiber to show for it. So I have my one green bat and then I have three absolutely huge red glittery bats, which I really like the color that they turned out. So very happy with these. And the last one I want to do, I want to do one more, and it's going to be white. And technically I don't have to card this fiber just because it's all nice and all prepared in roving form, but I do want to put it through the drum carter just because I want to blend it with a whole lot of glitter because I think that could be really fun. So let's do it. Last one. <laughs> day one. I will see you tomorrow. It's day two. Let's do this. Today I'm going to prepare the resist that I'm going to use for this project. So basically what that means is that I'm going to cut out a shoe and the hat out of foam. And before I officially start cutting the foam, I'm going to first design these on some scrap paper just to get everything looking good before I make it official. To make things easier on myself, I'm just going to trace the hat that I already have. And I'm keeping in mind that the felt is going to shrink quite a bit, so I want my hat to be roughly this size, so I'm going to make my template just a little bit bigger. Hmm, how am I going to do this? Hold on, I have to think for a sec. I think I already screwed this up. Take two! <laughs> I think that'll work. <laughs> Dang it, I messed it up again. <laughs> okay, we're going down. that I'm working with right now. I have my hat, my shoe, and the bottom of the shoe. And I realized actually as I was doing this that I needed my little curly Q kind of elf features to be separate from the main body of each piece just because I'm gonna be working with these inside out and these will get a little bit messed up in that process. So I'm gonna probably process these completely separately, which will make a little bit more sense later, but I'm pretty happy with all these shapes. I designed them so that on both the hat and the shoe, these pieces will fold down and this one will fold up just to give those cute little kind of like elf features. Yeah, let's put these on some foam and then we can start felting. I'm using a piece of 10 millimeter EVA foam and I went for a really thick piece thinking that it would help me in the felting process, but this may have been a little bit too thick. Whew, that is not easy to cut. By the end of the day, I had my three components all ready for the next step of this process. Here are all of the supplies that I used for the felting part of this project. 
I used quite a lot of generic blue Dawn dish soap, a spray bottle and a ball browse for applying water and soap to my project, a palm washboard, which is a wooden tool that makes the felting process a whole lot easier. I got mine from Heartfelt Silks on Etsy. Lots and lots of bubble wrap and plastic sheets, carded wools, which you saw me make in the first part of this video. I'm using just the red and white as my main colors. And lastly, some single ply, super bulky white wool, which I'll use for decorations. I picked this one out because I knew that it would felt pretty easily. As I mentioned, I'm gonna be making these shoes inside out. So the first components that I add are actually gonna be on the outside of my finished item. That means that I need to add any surface decorations to my project first. I wanted to give my shoes some white stripes using this white yarn. So first I submerged it in some warm soapy water. Then I figured out where I wanted my stripe design to begin, and then I started wrapping my foam resist in the yarn. Because the yarn is all wet and soapy, it sticks to the foam pretty well, and it makes this process a lot easier. Before moving on to the next step, I sprayed everything with some more soapy water just to keep things from drying out and from shifting too much. Next, I grabbed all the wools that I'm using for this shoe and I started tearing them into smaller pieces. Tearing up everything in the beginning with dry hands is much easier than tearing off pieces of the bat as you start felting, since the wool is much harder to handle with wet hands. The next step is to cover the foam resist in a layer of wool, and to do this I'm using a process that's really similar to paper mache, but instead of using paper and glue, I'm using wool and warm soapy water. I went ahead and I made a thick sharpie line to mark where I want my colors to be placed. I want the top half of my shoe to be white and the bottom to be red, so I'll place the wool in those places and make sure there's some overlap in the colors across that black line. Things are gonna get really wet and really soapy, but all of this excess soap and water is just gonna help the wool cling to my resist and also keep all those decorative white yarns in place. Once everything was covered with one nice even layer of wool, I used the bubble wrap to help me make sure that everything was evenly soaked with water. And then it also helped me flip the whole thing over so I could access the other side. Once flipped, I could arrange any of the white yarns that got shifted in the process. And then wrap the wool from the first layer around to the other side to make sure that all the edges are covered. I was especially careful around the pointy bits towards the top of the shoe. After everything was fully covered, I flipped the shoe again and repeated this process. I added some more wool to each side until I had a pretty even, pretty thick layer of wool built up around the whole shoe. Then I very carefully wrapped the whole thing in a plastic sheet, making sure to separate the pointy bits so that they wouldn't felt together. Then I could begin the felting process, which basically means agitating all of this wool until it shrinks and sticks together to form a solid piece of fabric. To do so, I used my palm washboard, the hottest water my sink could produce, and lots and lots of Dawn dish soap, and I just rubbed the whole thing. I started out doing this pretty gently just because the wool was still in a really fragile state, and as things got more felted, I could be a little more rough with it. 
And I kept the outsides of everything really wet and soapy just because it would help the palm washboard move around more easily. I worked on both sides and I flipped things around as needed to make sure I was getting everything pretty evenly. And every now and then I'd open up all of the plastic just to check in on the felt and to make sure that nothing was super shifted out of place. This was a super long process, but honestly, it was really calming and really satisfying. So I didn't mind all the work. After about an hour of working on the shoe, I checked to see how the fibers were doing by gently tugging on them. Since the fibers lifted from the resist as one solid piece of fabric, I figured it was strong enough to move on to some more intense felting methods. But before doing so, I wanted to remove the resist so I could work from both sides of the fabric. This part was really exciting because I could finally catch a glimpse of how my stripes were turning out. Before turning things right side out, I wanted to first help the yarns in the inside felt a little bit more because things were still pretty delicate in there. Then I cut my little spiky shoe details. And then I could finally turn it around to see its progress, which was so satisfying. At this point, the shoe was definitely felting, but still very loose and floppy. I wanted my fabric to be a bit more compact, so I started throwing it on the table to really agitate the fibers. Then I did some rinses in super hot and super cold water and alternated between the two to get everything to really shrink up. Hopefully you could see how different the shoe looks now. And before leaving it to dry, I shaped all the spiky details. To make the hat, I pretty much went through the exact same process that you just saw me do, but on my hat resist instead of the shoe resist. And since you just saw all of that, I won't bore you with the details. In summary, I wrapped the foam in wool yarn. Covered it in layers of my carded bats. And then agitated the whole thing until the wool was felted. All right, so we have one elf shoe, which you saw me make on camera. We have the big pointy elf hat. And then off camera, I ended up just making the second shoe to match the first one. And also these two very grinchy looking shoe soles. And today we're gonna take everything, put it all together and decorate, which is the part that I'm the most excited about. Before I start actually like putting pieces together, I need to make the final piece, which is that little silly curly cue that we designed earlier on. And I think how I'm gonna do this is by using 
the wools that we carded earlier just so everything is super cohesive and it matches. And I'm gonna use needle felting to create a little felt curl. Needle felting basically involves repeatedly stabbing the wool with serrated needles to stick it together and to form a piece of felt. So I just grabbed pieces of wool, felted them, and shaped them into a curl the best that I could, using my paper cutout as a guide. Lots of stabbing later and I have a little curly cue that I think I'm happy with and it fits pretty nicely in my shoe. It's very silly looking which is what I want. So I'm gonna set this aside for now. I'm leaving this all raw and fluffy at the end just because I think that's gonna help me attach everything later but before I attach this guy I want to attach the soles of the shoes. So to do that I'm going to Take one of my shoes and turn it inside out. I'm gonna attach this sole to the shoe and needle felt it together. Kind of like instead of sewing everything together, I'm just gonna use the needle and punch these two pieces of wool together. And I'm gonna leave the toe open so then I can pop this guy in. all nice and clean and now I'm gonna figure out how exactly to give it a curly toe I think I'm just gonna start by stuffing everything in here I'm kind of just gonna play until things are looking good and then needle felt it in place Whew, okay lots and lots and lots of stabbing later I have a toe that I'm pretty happy with but you'll notice that the stripe design just kind of stops. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the same yarn that I made this like stripe design with, and I'm just gonna wrap it around the toe and just needle felt it in place to continue that cute little design. really silly and it's really big and I think it's pretty much exactly what I wanted but I do think I want to add a little bit more to it so I decided to just look through my giant stash of stuff just to see what else I could possibly decorate it with and I ended up finding all of the scraps from when I made that Christmas jacket that you saw me wear earlier on in the video I hand wove that fabric on my floor loom and I cut it up and sewed it into a jacket and I kept all of the little bits and pieces of the fabric that were left over just because I worked so hard to make the fabric, I don't want to let these like nice fragments just go to waste. And I thought that they could come in handy for a moment just like this. I figured I could maybe use them to create little patches on my shoes and hat, kind of like if my little tree were mending its own clothes. And I think that could be really cute and add to the very like rustic handmade vibes of this whole project. Thankfully, all of these scraps are just made of wool, so they're going to be really easy to just needle felt straight onto my project. have to repeat this process for my other shoe then I have to decorate my hat and then it's time for the reveal project 
turned out. It definitely has to be one of the more absurd things that I've ever made before, but it just makes me smile looking at it, and I think that was the point. I definitely needed this project, because after a whole semester of like agonizing over pixels and teeny tiny paintings, having the chance to just like mash things with my hands and like stab things with a needle was really nice. <laughs> I think the hat and the shoes have a really charming, kind of like festive handmade look to them, which is exactly what I wanted. And I really like that we match. I think that makes it really special. Given that it's also my first time ever designing a felting project, I think it went pretty well and I could definitely see myself doing some stuff like this in the future. So overall, I'm pretty happy with this project and I hope you had a fun time tagging along with me on this adventure. I know this is pretty different than my usual content, but hopefully it was still fun. If you want to stick around and see some more of my adventures, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye, happy holidays.